The following is a presentation of the MinionWorks Podcasting Network. Hi everyone and welcome back to Freelance Heroism. Before we get started, we wanted to take a minute to talk about Roll for Relief. On Saturday, September 9th, we joined up with Minion Works Podcasting and streamed 14 hours of live tabletop gaming, raising over $1,400 in donations to help out victims of Hurricane Harvey. Viewers could donate to get a shout out, change the game, or sponsor the hour. Our games included Monster of the Week, Starfinder, a 5e crossover featuring freelance heroism and max's minions and welcome to duty land if you're interested in donating we'll have our gofundme open for a few more days you can find it at gofundme.com slash roll for relief if you want to catch the stream you can find it at twitch.tv slash max's minions now as you know i'm bubba and i'm rachel we're a DD 5e actual play podcast our current campaign is curse of straw a gothic horror inspired setting in the dangerous and fog shrouded land of ravenloft while the setting is serious, our heroes are not. Will they actually be able to defeat the Vampire Lord Strahd and restore peace to Ravenloft? Or will they just steal goats and invoice villagers? Or maybe I'll be outvoted on today's episode title. Join us and find out. On this episode, Baboon Rape Cloud. Last episode, the party was approached by the Baron of Valiki. Impressed with their ability to burn down a building full of vampire spawn, he planned to throw a party in their honor. Adri was invited to morning tea with the Baroness and other important women of town. Chinakote decided to check on his wolf companion, so the group ventured into the forest together. Afterwards, the party stopped for the night at the town's church, where they learned that the priest was brother to the Baroness. He warned the group about his nephew, a creepy little kid who stayed in the attic. The following morning, Chunakote and Ragnik went to retrieve the saint's bones from the smoldering remains of the coffin maker's home, well, the professional invited himself to join Adri at the tea party. Three, two, one. For once, I didn't need you bastards to get it right. God damn it, whoever that was. God damn you, whoever you were. God damn you. <laughs> It was awesome. Oh shit, I don't have dice or a fucking character sheet or anything. Wow. You do have sexy headphones. I do have sexy headphones. I feel like Princess Leia before the whole death thing. And they're not the satellite dish that Rachel has. Hey, what's wrong with my like giant halo the headset? They look like those old boxing announcer mics (laughs) with the big ring around. (laughs) Nice. In this corner, weighing in at 274 pounds. Whoa. Adrian's forehead. Oh. <laughs> All right, guys. Let me run out to my pickup real quick so I can get um get my shit. Okay. All right. Oh, wow. <laughs> and Deese from left corner. <laughs> He had to get a smoke. That'd, <laughs> that'd be an interesting uh, boxing match if professional <laughs> boxing. He would just constantly run. <laughs> <sighs> we left off at the temple, right? No, the no. tea house. You guys, you guys made it to the Baroness's house. We were the temple. Did he say we're temple? Heading that way. Okay. Yeah, because we gotta get the minstrels too here. Yeah, because Ragnik and Chunakote were either going to hunt down the ghost or something. And then... They had to go get the bones. Yeah, they had to get the bones. And then uh, Rachel and Deese were off to the tea party. Yes, we were. (laughs) Try not to elect Trump. (laughs) <laughs> that's funny let it sink that's in funny. let it sink in <laughs> I'm still waiting for others to get it 
I don't get it. The tea, tea party. party. The tea party. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's nowhere near as funny when you have to explain it. Sorry. Yeah. That's like explaining a joke is like dissecting a frog. <laughs> yeah, you understand it better, but nice. the frog's dead. Oh, poor frog. It's not easy being green. All right. <laughs> wow, Jake, you actually sound better. <laughs> I don't know what the hell why. I don't I'm either. Not, I'm not complaining. Let's take it. Let's run with it. Uh, speaking All of right. which, I am going to be sending you a package in the next week or so. Right on. Okay. Is this is this how he's coming on to you? That's what I, well, you just saw them chatting in the in the voice chat together or the. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to be honest yeah, with you. The, the clarity of that techno beat makes me both happy and upset a little. <laughs> <laughs> Are you happy in your shorts? Because I am. Uh, <laughs> That's why yeah, my camera's well, off. That's why my camera's off, because it looks the exact same as uh, Bubba's camera right now, except I don't have a mic like that. Ooh, I don't uh, get it. Anyway. <laughs> Alrighty. Why don't you um, explain that joke, uh, D? Uh, Alright. So, where shall we start off? With the bashing oh. two or the tea party? First, I want Rachel to describe herself in that fancy dress. No, she's she not. She said she was saving the fasting dress for the party. Oh, and she wore regular clothes to the tea party. Yeah. Okay. So you're going to the tea party in chainmail. No. Uh, she, she, going in like commoner's clothes. That's a fashion statement. Like like chain leggings mail. and a tunic. I didn't know you had other things. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck with this, Dee. Whenever, whenever you have, whenever you have to draw this comic. <laughs> <laughs> but I think, right, so I think tea party. this looks extra fancy. Or Kavir does. Oh yeah, no, yeah, Kavir's walking in debutante style. Well, the I just wanted to clarify because it is a technical thing here. Uh, I, I put on those um, fancy uh, clothes that I got from Donovic. Mm -hmm. And uh, the illusion that I had created of the clothes is a smaller dress. It's not like a big bouffant huge. If someone goes to like brush past me, uh, it won't give it away when they don't touch anything. So, All right. so it's similar in size. So that way they won't give away too much information. And let me make sure I got the name right. Leandra Ben Von yeah. Garavante. Von Garavante. Holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> every time, every time call I... Her Jane or something, huh? <laughs> every time I play a character, it's a commentary on people that are that trope. So, like, when I play a priest, I'm making fun of Adri. When I play a hero, I'm making fun of Ragnik. And when I play a nature guy who isn't hasn't happened yet, but I have the woodsman's clothes, uh, <laughs> it'll be making fun of Chunicote. Oh, I Lord. identify with the spirit of this log. <laughs> you said log. <laughs> <laughs> it's log, it's log, it's big, it's heavy, it's wood. It's log, it's log. Right. It's better than bad, We're it's good. Low brow. We're super lowbrow right now. It's like, you said log. I'm like... <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, where we start, which two are we starting off with? Uh, you, oh, fucking tea party all the way. Let's get this uh, shit started. I agree. I agree. Plus, it gives all me right. a chance to go smoke. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Alrighty, tea party it is. Okay. Alrighty. Where is this? Where is this held at? <laughs> the burgers, ma the burger master's mansion. That's and what right. was what was the name of his sister again? His wife? No, the, uh, the priest's sister. Oh, the priest's sister is the uh, the baroness Lydia Petrova. Lydia Petrova. Okay. I'll just look for the tennis professional. All right. Sounds good. So we pick up as you guys are watch walking the streets of Vliki. 
to the Burgers Masters Mansion. Outside, you see two guards standing there, and the mansion has its walls plastered with stone that display many um, scars where the plaster has fallen away from age and neglect. The drapes cover every window, including a large arched opening above the mansion's double entrance doors. Hmm. Huh. This looks like quite a fine how-do-you-do. Oh dear god, this might actually be more annoying than the confessional. <laughs> it only took one fucking <laughs> sentence for me to get that. I'm gonna I'm gonna look at uh at Adrian and be like, shall we go? Uh yeah. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Try to sell it, peasant. (laughs) Slap him and spit in his mouth. Oh, wait. Sorry. (laughs) Good lord. Wow. Wow. Stab me or something? (laughs) You are talking dirty tonight, huh? So, I guess we will approach. Um, EJ will. Greet right. them. The the front guard says, "Who goes there?" Um, my name's Adri. I got invited to the um, the the morning tea thing with the oh. the Baroness. Oh yes, oh yes. This <clears throat> way inside, please. Oh, thanks. He looks. So so, gonna... He looks at um Kavir and kind of tilts his head. Who's that? Leandra von Garavante of House Garavante, and I'll have you to move from my path, peasant. You, you, you almost see the guards actually kind of look at each other like, what the? <laughs> and they, 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 they both kind of move because they haven't been talked down that way except by the Baron himself. So they, as motion, they both kind of just move out of the way. Thank you. And I'm going to tilt my head up to the sky and kind of walk with with uh, purpose. All right. Kavir is very zesty naturally. So when when I really get to in tune myself to the uh to the zest of the nation, I, I can't wait to I would be a, I would be such a wonderful like courtesan for this city. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm sorry. Um, I just have to salt bay real quick to go with your zest. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's sort of like that, except for way fancier. So as um, as Adri walks by the guards, she'll kind of like look at them and just be like, "Sorry, sorry, you guys are doing great. You're doing a great job." All right, I'm gonna go. Bye. As you as you guys <laughs> as enter, you see framed portraits adorn the walls of the grand foyer. <laughs> which features a wide staircase with a sculpting railing. A long carpet hold attached to the foyer stretches almost the length of the entire mansion and has several doors leading away from it, including one at the far end. Bundles of twigs are heaped against the walls. As you guys walk in, you do see a young woman standing there patiently waiting for you. What does she look like? Um, younger human, blonde, dirty blonde hair, Face brown from dirt. Looks like she's been scrubbing the floors. You can definitely see the knees are wore on her dress and her skirt and her apron. Hmm. She curtsies as you two enter. And who are you, miss? I'm the maid Serena, m'lady. Serena. I'm Adri. And Adri's going to try to um, curtsy back, but she has no idea how to do it. So it's just going to be like... <laughs> it's like the dab of curtsies. <laughs> yes. <laughs> She'll she'll do like a a curtsy dab. Yes. All right. Perfect. Lady Adri, and she looks over at Adri's companion. Uh, uh, my lady, may I have your uh, name as well? Leandra von Garavante of House Garavante. I sh- shall announce you to the Baroness. Thank you. And I'm gonna look at Adri and be like, I can't believe this shit's working. Isn't, it, isn't this amazing? <laughs> This is going to make the best story. She opens the door and enters and she says this, Lady Baroness, we have two guests. The Lady Adri and the Lady Leandra von, von Gar- 
of how mm-hmm. the And then she looks back at the two of you and motions you into the parlor. Uh, I'm assuming there are people with drinks and things like that walking around. Yeah, it contains fine array of furnishings and draperies with an overall uh, feminine touch. It's almost the only room in the house that has just this finer quality like this that you can tell from looking at the walls and whatnot. As you guys are in the room, you see five other ladies in there. One, one being, you would assume, the Baroness sitting at pretty much the head of the chairs. Then you see another woman, which you guys recognize as Danica from the Blue Inn. Blue Water Inn. Mm-hmm. And then the others you guys do not recognize. They're all pretty uh, fancy. Actually, the only ones that are is the Baroness and Danica. The yeah. others are just as best as they can, but they're not really... They, they, they can't compare to the Baroness... Danica or yourself. Okay. Just uh, out of character here, I'm going to have to create a professional last minute alteration to my character. <laughs> I thought this is going to be much more fancy. Okay, so. Well, maybe that, I mean, it sounds like Leandra is very extra, so being very fancy to a tea party, I mean, maybe that's just something she would do. So, um, as we like go in, can Adri like kind of like like take uh, Serena's hand as like a thank you and let like, like give her a gold coin? She she takes it, takes the gold coin, kisses your hands, slips it into her apron, and quickly disappears down the hall. Okay, cool. I'll mark that off my dwindling gold. <laughs> Right. The Baroness stands up. Welcome, welcome, ladies. Please take a seat. Tea will be here shortly. There are cookies and biscuits on the table. Please enjoy yourselves. Why, thank you. Thanks. Lady Adria, my husband has spoken highly of you and your friends. Oh, um, thanks. I mean, we just are new and set a building on fire. Um... That's okay. But that, I guess that was that was a good thing, so that worked out. As long out. as it's against the enemy, it is the greatest thing. Right. And I'm going to mess this name up all night long. <laughs> Just remember, Leandra Von yeah. Garavante of House Garavante. Super easy. Just call him Toby. Oh, <laughs> All right. No worries, Bubba. Um, <laughs> damn it, I said um. Lady Not only Lydia, did you say um, I but you said um to, to admit that, you, that you said um. I'm sorry. Lady they, Lydia? Say, they say Lady Lydia? Or Leandra. Lady Leandra. Okay. One Apologies. of the people here's name is Lydia. Yes, it is. Okay, it's hers, the Baroness, uh, Lady Deandra. Uh, I wasn't told you were in town. <laughs> well, yes, I, I try to keep it subtle. You know, I don't, I don't want to make too big a scene everywhere I go. It's, it becomes a hassle. You know, it's so boorish having to deal with me. fans and uh, just, just eccentrics that only want you for your money. Well, you are welcome here. It is always well to have one of the old noble houses of Ravenloft. Oh, I thank now, you. Now, Miss Adry, we must ask. There is a number of women in town that are single, and you have come into town with three men. Are they single? Um. Oh my I God. We haven't we haven't really talked about that. I. <laughs> um. <laughs> Maybe t- two of I don't know. That's not really something that we talked about. Do you want me to ask them? Would you? Women are inquiring. Okay. Oh, uh, I bet it's about that Mr. Professional. He is simply <laughs> fantastic. 
a fine specimen. Yeah, they're not really too keen on the green one. It's the other two that they're they keep asking about. Mm. Okay. Well, I mean, they're all they're all pretty nice, um, but I haven't really. I mean, we've been busy like killing zombies and vampires and stuff, so that hasn't really come up in conversation. But right. I can I can ask them, sure. Oh, that sounds simply dreadful. Killing vampires? Well, they're pretty evil. Um, but uh, Ragnik, the green one, he and I have worked out this really great move where he picks me up and he throws me at them and then I grab them and then we both fall to the ground. And then Ragnik catches us and now the vampire spawns on the ground where we can kill it. It's really great. Um, it's actually a lot of fun. You actually hear a number of gasps in the room. <laughs> he puts his hands on you and picks you up? Well, yeah, yeah, he has to pick me up to throw me. There's more g- gasps come out for the women in the room like they're in complete disbelief. My character is absolutely covering her mouth, like trying not to laugh. <laughs> Just they're like, they're, they're, and aren't you afraid to be thrown into combat like that? Um, no, I mean... I mean, someone has to has to kill them, so I feel like I can I can help with that. The Baroness nods. She's like, "Oh, I'm I'm being a bad host. Let me introduce." Um, th- she moves to her left. This is Danica of the Blue Water Inn. Her husband owns it. Mm-hmm. Next is um, Yelena. Her husband owns the general store and owns the storage where we pretty much park things and. You know the stockyard. Oh, okay. charm, charmed. I'm and sure she points over, and that's that's Miss Darina. She's our candle maker in town, and that that is Isabella. She's a dressmaker. <gasps> <laughs> now, other ladies are invited, but of course, that old witch won't come. And the old old witch. What witch? Oh, that old hag that lives in the mansion across town. What's her name? Her name? Pausing for effect. <laughs> Lady Fiona Watcher. She has a book club she holds. She does it the same morning as, as my tea parties, that witch. How can she? She has a book her. club? Yes, yeah, she has a book club. <sighs> and she also has that creepy man that she has run errands for her all over town. He's always watching people weirdly. Hmm. Hmm. Well, we'll have to keep an eye out for that one. Disgusting rumor wretches, is, these filthy peasants running around eyeballing. Well, rumor is she's actually in league with the Dark One. The one <sighs> we shall not speak of. She wow. belongs to one of the old families too, but she believes that he should be in charge. <laughs> You hear a couple of the women in a gasp and kind of laugh, kind of not about it, trying to blow it off. Huh. Well, um, I mean, maybe we can, maybe um, me and my, my friends can look into it. And Oh, would you? Yeah, it, sure. It, it'd, be, it'd be nice to have her book club shut down. Well, I mean, if it's, if she's not actually being mean or, you know, working with with Strahd, then, like, you know, you don't want to shut down a book club. Oh, nonsense, nonsense. Book learning is for men. We women shouldn't deal with that kind of nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> what? Wow. Um, you have a... Yelena kind of looks over at you funny. She's like, that's funny, lady. I actually do all the bookkeeping for me and my husband in the oh, general store. That's a, a menial task. I have people read books for me and tell me my opinions. <laughs> <laughs> so. <sighs> but tell us, tell us. We need stories, fresh stories. Where have you guys been? Where have, you know, what have you done? Tell us your adventures, Miss Adri. Um, well, we were in 
uh, Barovia not too long ago. And, um, actually, that's where Ragnik threw me at a vampire spawn for the first time. They all gasp again. <laughs> How do you do that? Fly through the air with a man's hand on you. Well, he's not, I mean, he's not holding me anymore when I'm flying through the air. He has to let go of me. He's not a man. <laughs> 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 so it was really great we went down into this basement because I had like this um, this sort of like guiding divine voice tell me there was something important there so we went down there and, and hanging from the rafters like a bat was this vampire spawn and I mean obviously it has an advantage if it's hanging up like that and we couldn't reach it so Ragnik picked me up and he just threw me at it. And I mean, that was like, we didn't really plan it. So I think I acted pretty good because I, as soon as I hit it, I grabbed it and then we both fell to the ground. Except that Ragnar caught us before we hit the ground and he was able to separate us. And you then we killed us. Go for it. Or wait, no, we didn't kill it. We subdued it. You see all their mouths just open like <laughs> half, like tea cups up and like. <laughs> uh. <laughs> exactly, Bubba. And oh, we what? saved a little girl from werewolves. And from lycanthropy. <laughs> and <laughs> and from from being infected uh, with lycanthropy herself. The very nice, do you said you hear a divine voice? Yeah, sometimes. Um. Yeah. She kind of looks at the other women in the circle, and Dana cleans over. It's an elf thing, and Baroness. Oh, okay. <laughs> and continues on. They're all related too. <laughs> <laughs> um, David, how how big is this? Uh, how big is this mansion that we're in? How big? Uh, oh, good. Sixty, seventy feet long. 40 feet wide. Probably a lot of rooms. Yes. Three stories tall. A lot of rooms. Okay. Uh, I'm going to excuse myself. Excuse me. Uh, where Where is the restroom? Oh, um, just go out the door and call for uh, Serena, and she'll escort you. Right. Okay. Well, I will return, and I'm going to get up and do my, like, Obviously, trying to make fun of people that act like this walk. All right. Uh, well, okay. So. And uh, when I when when I talk to Serena, is there a way that I can roll insight on that or uh, uh, investigation? Go for it. I want to. I want to investigate first. To are you gonna? Are you actually gonna call her when you walk out the door first, or are you just gonna look around first? Uh, I'll just look around first. All right. As you exit the parlor. You do see the long hallway that goes down with five doors and a set of stairs that goes up. Okay. All right, and then I'll call for her. All right. You see her come down from the hallway. She goes over. Yes, Lady Leandra. I was told that you had a uh, room where I could maybe clean up a bit. Of course, this way. Um, while she's walking, I want to go ahead and roll my investigation on her. Uh, All right. At about 19. All right. She's common born, real easy to see, rough hands. She's worked her whole life. She doesn't know much more than this life. Real skittish. Okay, I'm going to roll an insight to see if it seems like she has any ulterior motives, hidden, anything. All right. I got an eight. <laughs> you can't tell. She's just really just still walking. Mm. No smile, though. You see her. Um, she does look upstairs every so often as she walks down the hallway, leading you to the freshen up room. Okay. And you said upstairs? She keeps looking upstairs. Okay. Um, when I, when I go into that room, uh, does she stand outside or she go about her business? She goes about her business. 
As soon as uh, the door closes, I'm going to peek back out the door and see where she's going. Um, she goes back down the hallway because she led you all the way to the end of the hallway to around the kitchen. Okay. So, she, you see her go back down the hallway and enter one of the side doors. Okay, I'm going to drop my illusion. All right. And I'm, I'm going to be Kavir the professional in super dress clothes. All right. And I'm going to be like, uh, I'm going to crack my knuckles. And I'm going to say, all right, let's get to it. And then I'm going to let's stealth danger my way upstairs. <laughs> You're to get back to the stairs. Actually, hold on. No, you notice. Uh, give me a, a spot check or perception. a perception. Twenty-one. You notice there is the actual side staircase from the kitchen that goes upstairs to where you don't actually have to cross the entire floor to go back up. Okay. Yeah, that works. All right. As you're doing that, back to the tea party. Um, Adri, so we'll like cut back and like Adri's in the the middle of the story of like how her and the rest of the crew killed the witch of the woods and like all the evil little goblin things and rescued all the children. That's when Elena looks up. Oh, then you should, you guys should be able to deal with the mad mage at the lake. Ma- the what? The mad mage at the lake. He fought Strahd and um, last they saw he was driven insane and now he walks around the edge of the lake. Hey, Adri. Yeah. This is a great time to agree to whatever the fuck you want because the professional isn't there to correct you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, what what lake is he at? It's north of Lake Zavor. Um, I'm sorry, Zorovic. Lake Zorovic. Yeah. If you take the north gate out of out of the city, you run right into it. He walks along the North Shore, but definitely you want to take a ferry across the North Shore or one of the boats. You don't want to walk it. Why don't the I want to walk it? The creature's around. Oh. It's not safe to be in that close to the woods. What kind but of with creatures? everything you guys have done, you guys should be fine. Hmm? Uh, what kind of creatures are in the woods? Werewolves. Oh, okay. Oh, and those evil Vistani. Hmm. Oh, yeah, I heard there's, like, there's, like, a camp around or something. Yes, if you take the west gate out of town, there's a small camp of evil Vistani out there. Okay. They have a few dusk elves with them as well. That's what I heard. I don't think I've ever, like, met a dusk elf before, so I'm actually kind of curious to to go meet them, but I don't know how nice they are. Uh, you'd have to actually talk to the hunters at the Blue Water End. They would know more. They've dealt with them. Okay. Or possibly go talk to the bard that has the circus wagon. He seems to have a great interest in the Vistani. Okay. I've seen him a couple times. Yeah. Though he doesn't... He's not as colorful as the other bard. Hmm. I don't know. Something's off about him. Hmm. So... Okay. Well, we will definitely check out this mad mage situation. Has he hurt anyone? Anyone stupid enough to get near him. Okay. Well, we will have to check that out. Because <laughs> we're that kind of stupid. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, Stupidity for justice! <laughs> the the Baroness kind of cocks her eyes, and she's like, the question is, how brave are you? I mean, I've been thrown at vampires, so I feel like I could meet a guy who wanders around a lake. What about the remnants? <laughs> what about the remnants of the silver dragons? There's dragons. There was once. Strahd killed him, but there's restless spirits in the house he once held. Where is this at? Adrian's just filling up the quest journal while you guys are gone. <laughs> like, yes, nice. yes, yes. Accept all the quests. It, nice. You take the west road out and head south once you get the chance. Okay. So take west road, head south. 
Hey, Bubba, out of game? Yes. I'm going to dump a crap ton of lore on you guys right now. Get her did. Tea party and gossip. It's like, it's like I need you to go out to the lake and get me 14 raptor buttholes and bring them back here. <laughs> oh, man, I am all over that. And oh, then, raptor, do, uh, raptor, not wrapped around. I'm sorry. Oh. And uh, uh, when you get back, <laughs> I'll, I'll give you this sword that will be easily replaceable in about 15 minutes of another quest. Sweet. Can we also get, like, mismatched pieces of armor? So if yes. you just swear, like, the updates, you look really stupid. Yeah, yeah. yeah we're gonna be mathematically this, like, wow, effective. That useless yeah. stats are, we're going to do this, like, wow, where the stats are so obsessive, you can't not wear that stupid looking armor. Yes. <laughs> As long as there is a kilt of giant strength, I'm there. Right? <laughs> All right. Um, right. Now, do you guys want to switch back to Chunakote and Ragnik? Sure thing. Sure. All right. Okay. So we left off with you two, I believe, at the temple, right? <laughs> or you guys were heading over to the... You guys were heading to the uh, burnt down house, Yeah, we were right? going to go get the bones. All right. Getting the bones. <laughs> so, so, Tunicote, I know that you are in touch with wolf spirit. Is there a way that you can sniff out bone easier than man? I think I can. So, if you could, like, um, shape of dog and I will form of water, we can wonder twin the shit out of this and... Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> All right, I'm, I'm, well, we walk, while we're walking over there, I'm just going to concentrate on the wolf spirits and Ask for their guidance. Alrighty. As you guys are walking over, you see... Give me perceptions. Let's see if you see. Alright. I'm going to use a, a Gen Con D20. Ooh. No, I'm not, because I dropped the fuck out of it, and I don't know where it went. <laughs> 23. All right. I got a 15, so I figure you, you saw it if I didn't. All right. You see two men walking up behind you guys at a distance. You recognize them from the Blue Water Inn. They're the two hunters that are wearing the furs. Now, do those are those furs? Um, are they like regular furs or are they werewolf furs? They are wolf. They are wolf pelts. Ah, uh, hey, plus nineteen. It's an abomination that you cannot abide. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, I don't even know any more backstory, but I'm guessing that's what's fixing to happen. <laughs> No, they're they are wolf werewolf pelts, both. So I see that or Chunicote sees it. You do. Uh, Chunicote, I am thinking that maybe your um communication with Wolf God has attracted hunter of wolf. And I kind of nod my head back at him. Alright. Um they come walking up and you know, friendly gesture to both of you. Good morning. It is a good morning. Every morning you wake up and you are not vampire or werewolf. It's damn good morning. <laughs> so, the one says, this is Solzar. I am Yevgeny. Welcome to Vliki. I appreciate that, my friend. Is there something I can help you with? Because you have been following me for quite some time now. Oh. Um, Are you thinking that maybe I'm exotic game that you can make pelt out of? Very few people in this town are sheep. Not enough hunters. Well, we are, we are definitely not sheep. <laughs> That's I, for I, sure from what happened yesterday. I might spend some time with goat, but... Definitely not sheep. Uh. They kind of look at each other oddly like, I, we've heard some old habits from the old country. So, you do notice one of them stays quieter than the other. You um, have Vigini speaks more than the other one does. I, I'm so, just staring at him. That's fine. They look over at Chunicote and you're still wearing your wolf first, right? Oh, oh yeah. I rolled a 10 inside. All right. You're not picking up anything hostile from the two of them. They're just, it, it seems like they're actually curious about the two of you. 
So what is it you would like to know, my friend? Well, we see your friends and you travel with them. And we were wondering if you'd like to uh, trade up. We, the other party members seem a little not hunter, not physical. I'm, I'm there, telling you, my friend, you might want to bite your tongue and watch your words carefully. Because if you insult my Adri and my professional, I will be forced to take action. We're not insulting him. We just... They may not be they hunters in the way that you see it as hunter, but they do more work than than is ever seen. We understand. The the hunt here is gonna it's gonna go dry soon. He keeps sending us out for wolves, he keeps sending us out after werewolves. Perhaps you should up your game. Werewolves are they're all right, prey. Vampire. That that is good good prey. That's what we want to talk to you about. Okay. Talk. We want to hunt. That's why we're here. You are welcome to join us whenever we go out and do what we do. However, I suggest you stay out of the way of Mr. Professional. He may not seem like much, but... No, the way he moves his tongue, never trust anyone that smooth. Wow, that just I'm not uh, that, that, that there is no, such a Prince no, song. No, no, there is a Prince song written all over that statement. <laughs> <laughs> and this is what it's like when doves cry. <laughs> you just start beating along with the right yeah. stuff. <laughs> oh, Lord. No, the, the professional only listens to Bruce Springsteen themes. <laughs> and now I know you're not a fucking professional. <laughs> what? He's the boss. He is the king of professionals. Pound sign. Prince rules. Oh, yeah. No, I love Prince, but I'm just saying that freaking don't shit talk. Uh, he may be the uh, boss, but Prince is a prince. Elvis is the king. You can't fuck with that. I'm sorry. Uh, Starman. The same. David Bowie. Fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> right? Uh, Alrighty. Uh, so. They, they kind of look at you guys and like, alright. Well, we figured we'd ask. Like I said, you're welcome to join. I mean, we will always take extra projectiles with us. <laughs> <laughs> they kind of look at each other odd again like, I'm afraid to ask. It is it is well-proven tactic. <laughs> it has a 100% success rate. Are you yeah, talking right. about when you threw the short one? Yes. Yes, I am. When we talk about crossbow, man, it means we fire people out of crossbow. <laughs> <laughs> and I am crossbow. Like, <laughs> uh, you, you see Soldar just kind of sh- look at the other one and shake his head. And the other one's like, yeah, Soldar doesn't like being thrown. <laughs> it's okay. I, I understand. Whenever, whenever little men face big men, he sometimes gets intimidated when big men throw him around like plaything. And that's a 27 Intimidate. Oh. Ooh. No, they, they, they're they like, they, they they back up a little. They're understood. We wish you luck, though. Yes. You come across a good game, you send a letter. Where, where can we find you? We're normally at the Blue, Blue Water Inn. Next but to- we've been thinking about heading up north. To where? Well... Not really north to the Mad Mage, but there's a their town called the, in the village of Kretsk. There's someone there called the Abbot. They say he's a priest. He runs the church there. He never ages. He's been there for three hundred years. Hmm. I'm I'm really hoping like hell that Rachel wrote all that down because <laughs> nobody else takes fucking notes, and we have so many side quests going right now. <laughs> Luckily, all this is recorded, so... It doesn't matter. None of us listen to it. 
listen to it. I listen to it every every oh. time a new episode goes up. I, I listen to it when a new episode comes out, but that's not going to do me shit all of good next time we record. <laughs> no, I won't I get there. It'll just take us six times as long. <laughs> I do have my DM notes, though. Good. So I can remind you. So I'm. if you were going to stay in town, how long are you going to be in town? Until the season dries up. Which is when? I mean, I, I, I am new here. Um, I did not buy werewolf tags, so I do not know when season uh, is up. Uh, they kind of look at each other. Uh, probably a few more months before uh, the hunting dries. Well, the next time that I go out to hunt wetter, or to hunt vampire, I will, uh, I will come look you up, and I will take you with me. They put their hands forward to give you a warrior shake. I shake both Clasping their hands. The wrist. They do the same one, one at a time. Kote. <laughs> <laughs> so, what are they doing? Shaking her hands. They, they reach. They reach forward to shake your hand by clasping the wrist, like an old mountain man's grasp, like an old mountain man shake. Yeah, Jake. Um, you're dropping hard, bro. Speaking of that bullshit, man, I was on the fucking. I was. I had my uh, secretary at the other office calling me today, asking me for mm-hmm. prices. So I'm I'm sitting there and I'm I'm looking them up and I'm putting options in and it takes a little bit of time. My fucking asshole salesman comes over and plays the Jeopardy theme right there into my speakerphone. <laughs> <laughs> While I'm trying to look up all these goddamn brand new prices that I know nothing about, I'm just like, if you don't get that thing out of here, we're gonna see if we can hear it from inside you. <laughs> oh, I bet the acoustics are wonderful. <laughs> Only one way to no, find no, out. Goblin that can help that. <laughs> so we know a goblin that can create great acoustics. Oh, <laughs> uh, inside D and D. Yeah, inside D and D. We had a in our in our uh, Puff, admin what, game. What, did you convince? Did you convince? Yes. Yeah, I convinced him. <laughs> okay, you told the story. <laughs> um. We were fighting this fucking mage that we couldn't hurt. Mm-hmm. And finally, I rolled this bullshit check, and I realized that his ring was regenerating him. Oh. So I cut off his box. hand and shoved it up his ass. <laughs> <laughs> right on. <laughs> and then I convinced the goblin that there was something shiny inside his butthole. <laughs> 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 so the goblin crawled through his stomach to get to the shiny thing in his bowels. <laughs> uh, we, were, we were playing Pathfinder one time, and there was this uh, like kind of Chinese temple out in the middle of this wood woodland area. I, I just figure I'll tell this while we wait for Jake. Yeah, mm-hmm. and uh, I, so we're taking a magic carpet there. I know it's a weird thing right but we're flying this magic carpet up above the tree line and when we look off the edges there's like thousands upon thousands of these crazed feral baboons just re- leaping around the trees like a like a swarm of them is right? it the red ass baboons I, they're, they're they're just like super gnarly like half pint murder machines and uh so we, we're investigating uh, and asking this guy a bunch of questions. He's being a real dick about it. He's this bandit. So one of our guys decides to take him and drop him off the carpet into the baboon area. And as he's falling down there, somebody casts a spell on him that makes animals love him. Like, oh, no. <laughs> animals. So the way that the scene was described to us was that it was this, like, rape cloud of, oh. like... <laughs> Of rape <laughs> baboons. Wow. And they were a like, baboon rape and he cloud. Was like, he was getting, he was being, he was screaming like bloody murder while his body, which I assume is dead at this point, is being flung from treetop to treetop and then being humped to death and thrown to another part of the tree. And I was just like, never, dude, somebody arrow in the face if that ever happens to me. <laughs> You shoot me in the fucking face. I'll re-roll. Don't let that happen to me. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and throw this out there right now. Ragnick will prefer death over baboon rape cloud. I think I think that that unless you what say about the otherwise, goat rape cloud. 
<laughs> Am I raping oh, her or the gopes? I like how the we're, we're going modifying. After you. I like how we're modifying rape cloud like it's a <laughs> normal thing to say. Where does rape cloud? <laughs> uh, I was wondering why Rachel's face bombing and I had to explain it to her. Oh, <laughs> no, we're not naming the episode Rape Cloud. <laughs> I might. I might. You can't. That'll immediately get taken down. <laughs> Uh, Think about all the fucking numbers we would get from just sick individuals. People, just, people would just need to know what that is. There's no way I scroll past a YouTube video called Rape Cloud. I'm just curious. Actually, I'm not even going to call it Rape Cloud. I'm going to call it Baboon Rape Cloud. Oh, oh God. Just call it BRC. And just... <laughs> And edit all this out so nobody knows what the fuck we're talking about. <laughs> right? Just DRC a... plus nineteen. <laughs> that, that, that's a that's a plus twenty seven right there, dude. It's, a, it's an abomination. An abomination. <laughs> I cannot abung. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> I, I think that clap thumps the plus. 19. All right. So, uh, so shoot, I'm, I'm also. Hang on, hang on. Hang I'm not done with this yet. <laughs> this is the longest handshake of all time. Right? <laughs> we, me and this, me and this fellow warrior are telling tales of our past. <laughs> all right, I'm done. I quit. Fuck. Chiricote, do you shake the man's hand? I I don't trust these guys. I'm sorry. All right. Oh, shit. They they're uh. So you don't shake their hands. They they kind of like look over and they shrug. You like, oh well. Hmm. Another day then. They head off walking back. Two of you alone on the main road over to the. Burnt down coffin maker's house. Hey, We're uh, all equal in the eyes of the coffin maker. Alrighty. So as you, <sighs> Chunicote and Ragnik reach the now cooled, charred remains of the house. And this is a good time to switch back to the tea party while Jake figures out his fucking audio. Alrighty. Fine. Back to the tea party. Okay. Professional, you've reached upstairs. Okay. Then I take a look around. All right. As you come up the stairs, you see left of you on a small hallway with two rooms. And then the hallway in front of you stretches all the way down the building. And you remember that would lead you to the stairs to go downstairs. Right. Okay. Uh, Any of these doors look more ornate than the others, like maybe a master bedroom? I'm checking right now for you. I mean, most architecture kind of follows the same general rules. Uh, Bedrooms, upstairs. Mm -hmm. Office, dens, closer to walkways. There is a... um, There's definitely one room that seems more locked than the others. the, the, The door seems more taken care of. Right. You do see the master bedroom down at the end of the hall. Okay. Um, which one's the one that's more locked? Uh, not a uh, not a bedroom, correct? It, it kind of is a bedroom, you, but it's a it's a smaller room than the next room. So it is a it's a smaller room. Okay. It's the first door on your left. Uh, just taking a look at the lock. Uh, does it look like something I can handle? Easily. Well, then uh, I'm going to look left and right, make sure no one's coming. All right. You don't see anyone. Okay. And then uh, and then I'm going to go ahead and try to undo the uh, lock. You, uh, it pops really easy. You can tell the door's barely locked. 
Okay. As the door opens, you just get hit with smells of powder and fine perfume. Ugh. You see a vanity with a mirror standing against the wall next to a, fa- a faceless wooden mannequin wearing a white bridal gown. Mounted on another wall is a full-length mirror with a gilded frame and a door in one corner leading to a closet. Okay. Uh, I'm going to investigate the doll. Um, I'm going to keep a decent distance. The thing's creeping me the fuck out. The 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 the, the mannequin with the with the wedding dress on it, it can, you can definitely tell it must have been the Baroness's wedding dress. Right. Um. It definitely. It's almost you can almost see it as a memoir to the happier times. Right. This room's it, you can pretty much guess that you found the Baroness's happy room. Right, because we it, all is, we all need one of those. Right. <laughs> Um, how about that closet? Is there a lock on the closet? Mm-mm. Okay, good. That that's never good when you see one of those. Um, okay. Well, I'm gonna take a look in the mirror, see if it seems weird at all. Uh, it it does in a sense. How so? Almost, you feel like you're being watched looking at it. Oh, okay. As soon as I get that feeling, I'm going to take a step off to the side. All right. So I'm not in the reflection of the mirror. All right. And then I'm going to hold out my middle finger, and I'm going to stick it in front of the mirror. (laughs) (laughs) I have a fairly good understanding of what I think that is. All right. Just out of curiosity... um, Okay, okay, that's a weird connection to make in character. Okay, so um, I'm going to go ahead and open the closet. Take a look in there. All right. As you open the closet, you just see more really nice dresses, more f- um, just fine clothing. Just fine clothing? Yeah. All right. Any, uh, is it all female? Yes. Fuck. And as you push farther, you can see the snow and the trees and the lamppost. Welcome to Narnia D's. <laughs> I, I literally thought we were talking about that mirror. I was oh, just like, no. I was having a moment here. I was like, do I go on, on my self adventure? <gasps> <laughs> Mr. Tumnus, Mr. Tumnus. If there's, if there's any among us who would betray us for some Turkish delight, it is definitely here. professional. <laughs> uh, just saying. Sorry. That's some good, that's some good shit. All right. Uh, so. I'm going to, I'm going to look around the room and uh, does it look like any of this stuff might fit Adri? <gasps> it could with the with the proper measurements being changed definitely easily. Okay. I'm going to... The Baroness isn't a very large woman. Okay. At all. I'm, I'm going to cut all of that to ribbons. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> well, Adri would uh, like this rip. Yeah. I'm gonna... <laughs> this is for the hat. This oh, is for the holes in the that. hat. <laughs> God, that's really funny, but I'm trying to be a not asshole. I'm trying to repair some of these broken fucking connections with my fellow party mates. You're so <laughs> full of shit. Okay, um, yeah, I'll, I'll throw a couple of those. Nothing that would appear like it's missing. I'll All throw right. those in, uh, kind of in my jacket roll or whatever. Alrighty. Um, and. And then I want to I want to take that mirror. I want to do something with that mirror. I need to investigate it further, but I I don't I don't have to tech magic or anything. Um can I can I roll like an intelligence check to to determine anything about it? Um d- yeah, for sure. Right on. Okay. I have all these custom rolls. I don't have a standard intelligence. That's one. Okay. Uh 17. Um, You can definitely pick up it's a magical mirror. Though, from the way it's placed and the way it's set in the room, you can fully guess they have no idea it's actually magical. Huh. There's a wedding dress. These people are extremely just, they have no idea it's magical. 
Okay. Okay, so uh, uh, is there a window in this room at all? No, there's no window in this room. Based on the architecture of the building when we were approaching, do I know if there is a window on the second floor? The windows on the second floor are along the hallway that you met on the stairs and the master bedroom, which is two rooms over. Okay. Well, I'm going to uh, to take the professional jacket, the one that I'm not technically wearing right now, and uh, right. I'm going to throw it over top of the uh, over top of the mirror so it covers the view. All right. And then uh, I'm going to head down and try to investigate the bedroom and uh, see if I can't get this mirror out of the building. Alrighty. Let me do a quick roll. Alrighty. You approach the... As you walk down the hallway, you approach the bedroom. You find it unlocked. Okay. So, it is... Um, as you walk in, you see time has faded the grandeur of the bedroom. The furnishings have lost their color and splendor. And a short rope hangs from the wooden trap door in the ceiling. Trap door on the ceiling? Like standard attic style or something more sinister looking? Uh, more of an attic. Okay. Um, you, you can tell the room is actually, all they do is sleep here. They, it's, it's, the room is, it doesn't have any real fine furnishings in it. It's almost like they, they just, it's kind of lost the magic. Okay. If that makes sense. Well, yeah, she has a happy room. I'm assuming they're not super. <laughs> <laughs> they, they've they lost the magic in the bedroom. I'm going to dress up like Dr. Oz and have a conversation with these two. I think I can fix this. <laughs> Never close your eyes anymore when I reach for oh, sure. you. Sure, the internet's clean as a bell when it's singing time. <laughs> <laughs> there it is a connection came through yay okay so I think um, what I'm gonna okay so I'm trying to streamline this make it as quick as possible on the uh, the, the little doorway thing that goes to the attic does it look like it's been opened or closed is there dust it, there's dust it doesn't look like it's entered at all lately okay listen check real quick does it sound like anything up there? Mm-mm. Okay. All right. Well, then, um, how about the window? Does it look fastened? You see a small fasten on the inside. Oh, my God, Bob. God damn it. He's sending pictures again. <laughs> I haven't got... <laughs> don't, don't look at it. It's really going to d- throw us. <laughs> it's going to throw us off. <laughs> okay. What were you saying about the window? Yeah. <laughs> It, damn it <laughs> opened it. <laughs> it has a latch on the inside. It has okay. a latch on the inside. <laughs> right. Okay. So now, looking at the window, how far is the drop? Is there a secondary roof or uh, any type of thing I can use to climb down? No. You know what? Screw no. this. Screw this. I'm just gonna hold the window open. Right. Kind of lock. Put it into the upward position. All right. Put the uh, mirror under my arm. This is a full body mirror. Yeah, that's fine. All right. And then uh, I'm going to take a step out of the window. Uh, you said it's a clear drop down to the ground, right? Yeah. yeah um, you're looking at a two-story drop, so you're on the second story. I'm going to uh, cast Feather Fall as I step out of the window. All righty. Well done. You slowly fall to the ground and land in her garden on her roses. I'm going to step on the rest of them. <laughs> <laughs> so let me get never, this straight. Never leave, a job ha- never leave a job half done. So he stole the mirror from her happy place and then he crushed her rose garden. <laughs> Man, that's like a fucking song. <laughs> he stole the mirror, it's mad. Mr. Rose Garden. And I'm <laughs> mowing down the roses. You got an old dirt road. We got a country song. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to uh, I'm going to use dash action, cutting action, dash action to get uh, moving along the way so I can try to get to uh, 
where they're at with the um uh what's it called uh the burnt down building oh good lord all right are you just leaving adri yeah oh it's a tea party you'll be fine vampire slayer <laughs> <laughs> oh dear lord they don't even know who i am oh, they well, think no. i'm leandra von garavante of house garavante Oh jeez! All right. Who came Back to Adrian. with Adri? Yeah. Oh <laughs> uh, no 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 no! Uh, like I'm super fancy, and she was dressed like a hobo. <laughs> Who <laughs> came with Adri? <laughs> oh well, that's a bummer. But they were watching her the whole time. <laughs> Sorry, Adri's got the quest journal filled up, so all right, She's got tons of stuff to do. <laughs> Go back to Adri for a moment. Okay. Oh my god, there's a song called Mowing Down the Roses. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Bubba. <laughs> so Adri- Adri's just finishing up uh, her story um, of, of how they, they saved all the kids and how there were like these terrible little creatures that like kicked out your kneecaps and, and all this stuff. Um. And then, and then, how they also burned down the witch's house in that scenario as well. <laughs> you, you, see, theme for us. You, you see, Danica take actually really interest when you say you burned down the witch's house and the different evils you've slain. Where mm-hmm. most of the women have like gasped at you, mm-hmm. you actually see the woman that her husband who owns the Blue Water Inn, mm-hmm. the ones who gave you the Toma Strad. Yeah, she actually, is just kind of looking at you like, all right. You know, it doesn't really phase her much as it does the others. That's because okay. she's woke. Right. <laughs> so. So also, quick question, although I'm sure yes. it's a yes. Is Adri the most, like, plainly dressed among them? No. Um, Adri's oh. close. Uh, her, okay. um, the candle maker and the dressmaker are also plainly dressed. Yelena's just a little bit more, but that's just because she has the general store. How okay. the fuck does the You're- dressmaker come more plainly dressed than Adri? That, that's weird. Because she doesn't have the money to make herself a dress. So the uh-huh. cobbler's kid has no shoes. Is that what you're telling me? <laughs> yes, sir. And this is just an the thing is full of allegories. It is. Um, <laughs> Adri can pick up the most of the women here actually really don't like the Baroness. They're only here for the food. Because this is, yes, it's actually some of the best food in town. It's why they come. Because other than that, they don't get stuff like this. You know, completely fucking metagaming here, but um, yeah, are they here for the food because it's good, or are they here for the food because it's food? And the the bear, the burgermeister has been draining the town's recesses resources. He's he throws more parties than not. It's not that he's rating their resources. Okay. It's just the other ones don't have the quality of food she does. I'm just trying to find out the socioeconomic status of the of, of fucking. <laughs> oh no, that's fine, leaky, buddy. Thanks, half orc. <laughs> <You're> profiling <laughs> the fucking societal norms. Elena gets up to get herself some tea and she bumps into Adri gently and drops a note in her hand. Oh. Nonchalantly. Sweet. I got a secret note. Um, Adri will put it in her pocket since. Okay. Uh, before she can, like, because she'll want to probably kind of wait for the attention to be off of her before she reads it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, she apologizes and asks you if you need a refill on your tea. Oh, um, uh, sure. And while you're doing that, I'm going to go get another one of these really good cakes. All right. And then Adrian will go to the table and, and read the, the note while she's, like, Wink, it wink, asks for nod, nod. you and your friends to come <laughs> by the general store at night. So. Okay. Just put the note back in her pocket. You shouldn't have told him that we cured somebody of lycanthropy. <laughs> Are we just not going to pronounce that word right? Ever? I'm, really I'm, I'm actually not, and I'm doing it on purpose. Thank you. <laughs> so. It's thropy. All right. <laughs> Okay, so she'll uh, she'll put the note back in her pocket 
and then come back. Alrighty. We're going to bounce back over since we got good audio from Jake right now. Over to the cool charred remains of the coffin maker's house. All right, I'm going to look at Chinacote. Um, Chinacote, how, how does this work? Do you drop down on all fours and dig up bone? I don't think I have to go quite that far, my friend. <laughs> I'm just going to I'm gonna walk into the remains and just kind of sniff the air and close my eyes and just focus on the scent and see all if right. I can locate these things. All righty. I'm going to need a roll for you, sir. All right. What is that? Like a perception? Survival for tracking. Survival? Oh, beautiful. (laughs) Fifteen. All right. As you go through, you do find different pieces of different bones. One of them, you can actually see the teeth of one of the creatures you burnt to death in the skull. Eventually, it takes you about 15-10 minutes of sorting through all the char and the remains and the smells to actually find a canvas husk bag um, trunk that was made of metal and wood. At one time. Okay. In the bag, you do I find a series of bones. So I, I can assume these are the bones we're looking for? They are untouched and completely uncharred, and they don't carry any smell of the fire or the smoke. Huh. Hmm. Strong medicine actually, techniques. As, as Trinacote lists them up, Ragnar can actually feel his holy symbol react to them. Considering that rang his holy symbol scarred into his chest. <laughs> um, my friend, I do believe that those might have the um, emanations of, of goodness that we are searching for. Either goodness or perhaps evil. I'm not sure. But I, I think that is what we are looking for. I think you're right. Let's see if we can get back to the church and see if, if the uh, father can uh, identify them. As such. So, as you guys begin walking back to the church, you see the professional running at you at full speed <laughs> with a giant mirror's <laughs> arm <laughs> and a jacket over the top of it. I'm just shaking my head. Is this part of payment that I get portion of? This well, there's is, something you don't see every day. This is investigation. <laughs> I'm taking uh-huh. it back to my lab for closer study. <laughs> uh, by, your, by your lab, do you mean your bank account? Uh, I, I don't know where we're going with this exactly. Maybe the hotel? The, the inn? This, this Did, is... Where, where is Adri? Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, I, I don't know, tea or something. She she was talking about uh, how she hated us and didn't want to be part of our group anymore. <gasps> okay, since so Shinakote has the bones and the professional has the mirror, Ragnit heads off towards the tea party. <gasps> yes! Oh, good lord. <laughs> I got some dresses if... Uh, oh, yeah. He's already gone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no, did you need to get Ragnit intelligence checked into a dress? <laughs> Oh, there's no intelligence <laughs> check needed. If he has one that'll go over my big ass, that that's done. I don't think they oh, make them. Like no, they don't. That's the problem. We, we could go bar. We could go bar. Or that circus tent that uh, Bard has. <laughs> I mean, because trust me, Ragnick and Drag is something I would pay to see. Not a lot, <laughs> but I'd pay to see it. <laughs> 20 bucks is 20 bucks. 20 bucks <laughs> wow. is 20 bucks. <laughs> yeah, dude, you're right, man. Without Adri facepalm, Rachel facepalm half the time, dude, some of these scenes are... <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's really not. It, it, the whole table feel is gone, and I'm I'm upset. I'm sorry. So. That's why I turned my camera back on. At least I can look at myself. Fuck y'all. 
Oh. I just want to get the. We just want to get the si- signal right for everybody. Yeah. So. <laughs> Dick. I'll just do it periodically. All right. So, Ragnik sitting that way. You two are heading back. Ragnik reaches the Burger Master's house and finds the two guards outside. They look up. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> These I guards am, are the most normal people. I am here for tea party. They look at each other? I, I ain't telling them no. But, but, I don't get paid that much. That is a good idea. <laughs> they, they they let you walk in. <laughs> they just kind of like step out of the way like, dude, he killed like six vampires. I heard they were half. It doesn't matter. He killed them. <laughs> By himself. <laughs> Dude, he beat one of them with one of them. Are you kidding? No. <laughs> All right, so I open up the front door and duck to get in because I'm assuming yeah. everybody lives in hobbit holes. Mm-hmm. You duck to get in. The maids kind of looks up at you like, hi? Yes, I am here for tea party. <laughs> what name do I give the lady as an announcement? Ragnick the Bold. She walks to the door. Lady, I present you Lady Radnick the Bold for tea party. Not lady. I am man. Ish. <laughs> <laughs> they all kind of stop and look at the door like, y- y- who? <laughs> and, and I come in, Radnick. Radnick the Bold. <laughs> and you see all of them light up. We never have a men here before. Please, please come in. AJ, AJ will gasp. She's like, Radnick. Come try these little cakes. They're so good. Did you say blessing? Um. Well, they're no. not like sitting down for a meal. So, like, mm, there's mo- not like a communal blessing. We can we, do it now, though. We, we must be thankful for sustenance. That's true. <laughs> All right, let's do a blessing now. Okay. God, I've you lead this never one. been happier. Never been happier to have left a fucking tea party in my life. <laughs> oh Lord. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> AJ AJ will take Ragnick's hand so that they can And I'm gonna grab the, the lady to my left. Heads. I'm gonna grab the lady to my left's hand. <laughs> now you grab lady to okay. your left. And I make them all hold hands. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're all holding hands and the Baroness is like, What are we Oh, she's like, Okay, my brother does this. <laughs> <laughs> And Danica's like, no, it's an elf thing. And the Baroness is like, really? <laughs> they are all related. <laughs> no, we're not. <laughs> and Baroness is like, really? I've never met that many elves before. That is why. They are all related. It's very small gene pool. <laughs> I must talk to you about your family out there with the Vistani. They are really evil. They're not my family. I've never even met them. Dis no. cousin? No. no. <laughs> I don't have any... <laughs> Well, okay, let's let's quit talking because I want to try a little cake. Say blessing, okay. please. Okay, Adrian. okay, let's do. Okay. <laughs> they all bow their heads. <laughs> Who's doing the blessing? You are. Adrian, you're right. Adrian. Oh, I am. Oh, okay. <laughs> is there actually a blessing? Oh, this is fantastic. Let me see. Oh, Bubba bought name. a prayer book, bro. You don't have no idea. <laughs> Oh. I bought I bought a kid's prayer book. <laughs> so AJ, AJ will bow her head and she'll say, uh, may this food and the gods strengthen our bodies and give us grateful hearts in this land where many walk in fear. May we be the light in the dark that soothes uneasy souls. And by God, she means court. <laughs> like the lamest green lantern activation ever. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I almost want to do it now. <laughs> All right. And with that, I will try one of these little cakes. Okay. Nice. How, how does that? How does that fit on my orc palate? <clears throat> I'm thinking it all just tastes like shit. 
is like that's really good, but it's actually you're eating the plate. So right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. for like you, it, it's doily. just it's really sugary, and you're used to more like sour meat. And yeah. it just I'm gonna I'm gonna be like Adri. Mm-hmm. Thought you said this was good. It is good. Yeah, you can have the rest of mine. <laughs> and it's got like orc slobber hanging off of it as I hand it to you. Oh, <laughs> okay. Um, she'll put it on her plate, with, but like not touching the other f- <laughs> food that she has on her plate. Okay. Um. So anyway, uh, Ragnik, uh, oh. this is... Uh, she'll go around and introduce everyone All to right. Ragnik. She'll say, "This is Ragnik. He's the he's the half orc that throws me at the the vampire spawn. It works every time. One hundred percent, one hundred percent success rate. That's right, every time." The Baroness looks at Ragnik. So, Mister Ragnik, the ladies of Leaky want to know: Are you single? I'm. I'm not sure what you are asking. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am single man. I am only one. <laughs> Do you have a mate? Do I? No, not at this moment, no. There are women in town asking about you. I am sure there are, but it will take something very special for me to be interested. The Baroness is like, I will tell my friends. Like maybe the demon orb. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, wow. Oh, yes. The demon arm. I was so hoping he'd get it to the the demon's arm bedroom, but he didn't. Oh, well. I'm sorry. Way to go, Deese. You found a fucking mirror. You saw yourself. And your narcissism yes, you took the fuck like, over. Have have <laughs> Guys, I found I found a, a full body painting of the most beautiful man I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> he looks amazing. So whenever I look into it, I can agree with that. No, when you look into it, I'll be like, oh, never mind. Throw it away. Yeah. <laughs> oh. So. Now, back. Chunakota, you're going back to the church, right? Yes, Father Lucian needs his bones. All right. Now, Kavir, are you going to the church as well, or are you going to the inn? Um, well, I, I guess I'm going with uh, Jake. I want to kind of try to keep us together now that we've decided. To, we, we didn't even get half. We got halfway through the episode, and we're just like, all right, Chinese fire Joe. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So you guys reach back to the church. You've walked a whole pretty much the whole place carrying a mirror under your arm. Right. Nobody has said anything. Nobody stopped you. You do get a couple weird looks. You got, um, you know, one gawker's just kind of like standing in awe looking at you like, the hell? Surfboard. Um, as you guys reach, you find, um, you find the priest sitting out there in his garden pulling weeds on his knees. Father Lucian. Hey, what's up, man? Ah, uh, Brother Kavir, how are you? Oh, by the morning, Lord. Is that my sister's mirror? Oh, yeah. Hey, I, I totally forgot to deliver that message for you. I got kind of sidetracked. Uh, no problem. I, I, think, I, don't, I Brother think Kavir, I don't want to know. I think this is magic. How did you get that out of my sister's house without Isaac catching you? Uh, uh, interconnected series of pulleys and a, a buttload of human guile. In other words, uh, magic. Gonna... <laughs> <laughs> I don't even want to know. Just <laughs> if get this were a cartoon, Isaac catches you. If this were a cartoon, there would be a flashback to me just like fucking Featherfall walking out of a window. <laughs> <laughs> and Brother Chinocote. Is that what I think it is? Well, I'm hoping so. He he puts his hands for his hands towards. May I? Oh, of course, I hand them to him. He opens up. He looks at him. Oh, thank the morning Lord. He hugs both of you, one arm around each of you, a big firm hug. Aww. 
Oh, blessings on both of you. Blessings on your friends. The church is protected. They should say a prayer together. They should. Shut up and eat your cake. <laughs> <laughs> well, Father Lucian, if you if you wish to say sweet praise to your to your God, I'm 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 not offended by that. He he shouts praises to the morning Lord while holding the two of you firmly. Right. Oh yes, this is fun. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. We're done. David, <laughs> you yes. need you need to write prayers. <sighs> You're right. I know. Actually, I will. I like this guy because I don't have to fake around him anymore. Like he knows I'm an asshole. <laughs> every every time you try to lie around him, it fails. Yeah. I mean, or well, you did zone of truth me. So. Yeah. And every time you try to like pull something sneaky around him, it also that's, fails. That's why I don't even bother anymore. Like I I could have told him I told his sister, hey, or whatever, but I was just like, yeah, I forgot. I was stealing things. <laughs> he, I have he's to do, the two. Go for it. I have to do just enough good with this guy so that he doesn't think I'm a terrible monster and that I'm redeemable. So like we brought back the bones and I stole a giant mirror from his sister. Like, <laughs> do you see what I mean? Yeah. We burnt down a person's livelihood. But there were vampires in there. Lesser of two so, evils. Always the lesser of two evils. <laughs> right. It's like the cup is half full. The cup is half, half empty. I ordered a cheeseburger. You two, know what I mean? Like Two vampires, one cup. Right. Oh. No. Oh. oh. Oh, how gross is a video when five years after it's out, you still make you kind of vomit? Yeah, bro. We That's had solid. guys at work watching that video, and every time it gave the computer cyber herpes. We had to call tech support every time they watched the stupid thing. Why did you keep I, watching it? You know, I have never it seen it. Operator, it literally torched the work computer every time. Shut down the plant for a day. David, I, I have never yeah. seen that video. Oh, I've never, no. I've never oh. watched it, but I've heard what's on it. Man, yeah. my friend searched for three hours at a game store one time on a computer in the back, trying to find that video just so he could make me feel disgusting. And he finally found it, <laughs> oh, and he oh, ran out screaming out into the parking lot where I was smoking. He's like, "Dude, dude, you gotta see this!" I'm like, oh, "Okay, okay." So then I saw it, and I was just like, "Oh my god!" And Deese is like, so, "Yeah, that was last Friday." It is so. It's so explicitly wretched. Like you can't possibly fathom how gross it is if you haven't seen it. No, yeah. I don't want to see it. Yeah, Never. words, words. Yeah. Oh. I mean, I think you should. I think every human should have no. to no. No. just to be no. part of the of what it is. You know what I mean? No. You have to know that kind of stuff exists in order to really. Oh, I know that kind of stuff exists. I, I get links all yeah, the time. You don't, don't have to see it. Because trust no. me. David, no, there, there's a I, there's a reason that I send y'all so much fucked up shit. Not even that's close. The, that's shit the bot that's is. the that's the bottom one percent of the shit that I get. Your shit is like third grade t ball in comparison. I I'm Everybody aware. Is. That's what I send y'all. <laughs> oh, good lord, it's so nasty. Oh, uh, anyway, I'm you know, sorry. speaking of Bob, I found a Folgers video I need to send you. <laughs> oh, is it the one where the woman is um the brother and sister? Yeah. One? Yeah, the brother and sister one. Yeah, I call that Lannister coffee. <laughs> <laughs> the best oh, part man. of waking up. Uh, <laughs> Jamie in your butt. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and bubble with the sound effect. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sorry. We're getting sidetracked again. <laughs> All right, we got, okay, we got the bones back. Oh God! You gotta say bones right now. <laughs> yeah, you got the bone back, buddy. The lovely bone. Oh, yeah. yeah, everyone got Jamie's bone. <laughs> Lucky. I, right. I ain't gonna lie. If it meant I could be a Lannister for a day, I'd, t I'd take a shot in the mouth. Whoa. Twenty gold is twenty gold. Twenty gold is twenty gold. <laughs> I'm not gay, but 20 gold is 20 gold. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no, so... Um, so that's the I end wanna, of the episode, 20 gold. <laughs> what? I want to I wanna talk to uh, Lucian. I want to say that uh, I think 
this is magic and you seem to have a pretty good grasp on this kind of stuff. Could you detect if this is evil or not? Mm. He nods and he's like, I can, I can try. I don't, I don't want to take my coat off of it. I, I have this weird feeling that something's watching from inside. No, he, he kind of, well, he stops for a minute. He's like, the, the problem is, I, I know you're not used to being in Barovia or this land. Um, the ancient, ancient texts speak of casters being able to detect, um, being able to cast spells and seek evil in people or see good in people. And they used to teach it, but the problem is it got to so thick where you actually literally just picked up evil in the ground around you. Hmm. Yeah, but I can cast, I can cast and I can, and I can cast to take magic on the mirror to see what, you know, what happens. Yeah, please do. All right. He goes and begins to cast on the on the on the mirror. So he it uh, he kind of like stops for a minute. He's like something's bound to the mirror. What do you mean bound? Oh, uh, like a soul is bound to it. Huh? Does it seem malevolent? I guess that's sort of like evil, huh? Uh, uh, it's. <clears throat> I'm unsure. Well, I guess there's only one way to find out. I'm gonna take the coat off of it, and I'm gonna stand in front of the mirror, and uh, I'm gonna say, "Who's in there?" I'm going to stand off to the side and ready myself for combat. The, 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 the Lucian, I believe there's a, there's a command phrase or something you need to say to activate it. Oh, uh, Candyman, come to me. <laughs> the mirror just kind of sits there. Ah, oh, man, I don't know. Shit, I'm going to, like, talk to a sword. I'm going to be like, anything? The sword... Kind of looks like, ah, uh, I've heard of this mirror. Yeah, yeah. Um, this mirror has an assassin spirit tied to it. Oh, Ooh. that's cool. Depending on who the depending on who activates depends on the assassin. The oh, only that's... issue is, it's. My brother was fond of mirrors like this. I remember him having one similar at one time. What? What is that? I mean, what does it do? What is? I don't remember. It's been a long, long time. <clears throat> All right. But I definitely wouldn't. There's a way he knows to actually see through them at times. Oh, I'm gonna kind of like pose in front of it, like, hmm. Okay, well I guess I'll uh, grab a sheet or something. I'll grab one of uh, Adri's thousands of sheets that she uses to cover people with. What? You cover every body we found with a sheet. So I assume <laughs> that you have like a thousand of them. Anyway, I'm just, I'll, I'll grab any, a sundry sheet, whatever, and uh, just kind of throw it over the mirror. All right. Well, I thought this was going to be more exciting. Sorry, guys. Yeah, it's only an assassin in a magical mirror. That's not yeah. exciting. I can't use it. And uh, I think we lost Jake again. So what'd you do? Break it? <laughs> no, uh, he doesn't know the magic words to activate the assassin. Oh, okay. Well, that's that's pleasant. That's actually good. I guess like he'd, he'd probably use it to assassinate us because he's a fucking cocksucker. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to assassinate you guys. You're the thing keeping me alive when things aren't about thinking. And it's about going boom, boom. 
as, as long as you don't have a magical fucking assassin. I have a uh, <laughs> magical assassin mirror. Same thing. All right, so back to the tea party. All right. Go back to the tea party with Ragnik and Adrian, the women. So the morning's fading to afternoon. So, I mean, you guys are sitting there. The afternoon's coming up. The tea's gone. Uh, the Baroness begins to stand up and thank everyone for coming. Well, thank you for inviting us. This of course, and really it was nice. a nice change, nice change of pace to have stories besides my own and the the rough shambles of the village about. And I will reach out and I'll give her a warrior's handshake. <laughs> the Baroness looks over and Danica leans over. It's a green man thing. She's like, okay, and reaches over to shake your hand. <laughs> it's not green man. It's 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 handshake of cord. What is cord? What is cord? <gasps> uh, let me tell you about my lord and savior cord. Oh, <laughs> and you guys sit down for another forty eight hours. <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> <laughs> so. But no, um, you guys spent another good half hour speaking of cord before you guys hear the Baron as the Baron comes home, comes in, he sees everyone in the room. He's like, ah, the heroes are here. Hi. Hello. Welcome. Ragnik, right? Correct. And I apologize for forgetting your name. Adri. 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 The Baroness is like, it's rude to forget our, na- our guest names. And the Baron kind of just gives her the side glance of like, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Misogyny is like, not acceptable in most realms. <laughs> the Baron looks over. Now that we have true heroes here, all truly will be well. You guys are coming to the Blazing Sun Festival, are you not? And when is that again? End of the week? Two more days? As long as we are alive, yes. Yeah. And as we agreed, I'm not forcing anyone to come this time. Good. Not only are you not forcing, but you're not going to put anybody in stocks that does not. My word is my bond, sir. He bows for a moment. And I I pick him up and hug him. Up. <laughs> ah! He, he kind of lets out a... <laughs> Startled, and he get you see, you see his two masters kind of look up all like, huh? <laughs> when he gets down, they they both kind of calm back down and go back down and laying down. And the Baroness kind of just looks at the dogs, disgusted. They're in the house. Oh, I don't like her all already. <laughs> <laughs> she is an abomination that you cannot abide. <laughs> Oh, I'm so glad Azania worked for that. <laughs> Across town, all of a sudden, Chunakote just like looks up and in the direction of the the Baron's home. <laughs> just, Some dogs are in trouble. <laughs> full anime run, dude. Across town, the legs kicking in that full big cloud of dust. I cannot arm, abide. Arm <laughs> <laughs> He's got the parachute arm thing. Yep, exactly. <laughs> like, like canine sense is tingling. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh shit! Um. All right. Well, as since they're probably gonna start uh, shuffling yeah. us out, um, Andrew will will stop by the the Baroness I, and I've heard her- I've heard oh. that you have boy. Yes, the Baronet. Baronet. This, oh, um, the Baroness is my son. I would like to yeah. meet you. I would like to meet your son. Yeah, how come he didn't join us? The Baron kind of looks all like, uh... The lad... <laughs> the lad's unwell most days. I... I I understand that. I I was thought unwell for most of my life. He he's like, you know what? I'll bring him down. I'll summon him. 
He Good. calls out Serena the maid to come and will you go get Baron at Victor and bring him down and tell him that guests have asked to see him. You see her demeanor go immediately to fear that she has to go upstairs to go see the kid. Oh shit. Uh, um how about how about I go I go with you? Um the Baron's like me as well. You know what? We do not need to have the baronet come here. We can go to him. Yeah, actually, me and Ragnik, um, we we might be. I mean, if he's like sick or something, we might be able to heal him, make him feel better. He's not sick. He just never comes out of his room or his workshop. You see, the father kind of <clears throat> put his hands in the air, making fun of the kid's workshop. So well, we can we can go up and see him then. I mean, if he that's fun. Okay. Uh, let's let's go then. All right. So she begins to take you guys upstairs, and she takes you up to the second floor. And then she, as you guys reach the top of the second floor and come around the corner, she's like, "We'll stop by his room first before we head up to the." the attic to check on him. Okay. Who all who all came with us? It's Adri, Ragnik, and the maid? Yes. The okay, bear, so the, the baron, baron and the baroness. Did not come? They stay downstairs. Okay. No. The baroness still has guests and the... Rachel, if I kill this well, kid... Child. You what? I said if I kill this kid, have a stern please talking to me. <laughs> please don't kill a child. <laughs> What about if he's a vampire child? That will be complicated. <laughs> uh, we probably shouldn't murder someone's child in their own home. You see the woman kind of panic. Why is that door open? As she looks down to the end of the hall, and you see a side set of stairs, and the door left of the stairs is open. That door's locked. The maid rushes down the hallway and looks around the room and she kind of closes the door slowly. I'm going to step into the boys' room. Well, you, um, that's down another hallway. Oh, sorry. She she saw the, a door open at the end of the hallway. Yeah, I, I know which door she saw open. She, the one that the left professional open. couldn't fucking yeah. close because it was unprofessional. <laughs> no, I, I didn't close it because I never specified and this is an easy way for the story to progress. <laughs> <laughs> she kind of closed the door and she looks at she looks at the two of you we didn't see that open and she nope. walks farther I see nothing she's like I'm not explaining why the mirror's missing I don't know why I don't know how but the Baroness doesn't go in there anymore what, so. what, what mirror <laughs> there was a the Baroness she had a mirror here next to her old bridal gown in there that she kept and she looked into, and it's no longer here. What is the significance of mirror? It was just an old, old mirror that was here before they moved in. <laughs> Ragnick is like, his gears are moving real slow, but they're moving. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was... She begins to describe the mirror you saw under Kavir's arm as she sp- talks about the height and the frame of it. Huh. That's weird. <laughs> why? Why would the somebody? Why, too. why would somebody take that mirror? She shrugs. It's not the first time the house has been broken into, but the bandits were chased out of town by Isaac. <gasps> bandits! Oh, guild! Oh, guild! Hey, Deese, so. can you stop coming over there for a moment so we can continue role-playing? Thank Aww. you. <laughs> so, they lead you to the kids' room um, down a second hallway. As she knocks on the door, nobody answers and she opens it. You see a handsomely appointed room containing a canopied bed, a low bookshelf, and a full-length mirror and a wooden frame on the wall across from the door. Set into the north wall is an arched window of lead glass. Okay, I'm I'm just gonna walk Nothing. in and take the mirror. 
Uh, Ragnick? That's a joke. That didn't happen. <laughs> okay. Good. We should all take a minute to reflect on all these mirror thefts. Uh, um, wow. the, the, the room looks just like a real, like, nobleman's son's room. It, it's nice. It's it's well taken care of. On the bookshelf, it has a number of books of Barovian fables and tomes. Yeah. Myth- I, I, rolled a two on my perce- I rolled a two on my perception check. So what do I see that is out of the norm? <laughs> uh, you see that the shoes are missing. All of the shoes? No, just one pair. Oh, okay. So, Edri. Yes. I, I think maybe child is not here because there is a pair of shoes missing. Oh. Can I also roll perception to look at the room? Of course. Okay. Oh, that's really good. Uh, 24. Ooh. 24? Mm-hmm. You look around the room, you notice the books on the bookshelf. Nothing here really seems out of place or speaks of the illness you've seen, you've heard of the kid in secret. Okay. So. Okay. So, uh, Adri will turn to Serena. So, he might be in his workshop? Is that what they said? Uh, yes, the only way up is through the master bedroom, through the trap door attic. Okay. But that is, she looks at you too, and almost like she wants to say something, but she doesn't. Look, you are with people that you can trust. Adri like, did give her that gold. Yeah, she's like, she looks at both of you. Just to be honest, the kid's downright creepy. And we have two servants missing. We have no idea what happened to him. And he just snickers every time he walks by. What about Demon Arm? Does he not live here? Oh, he does. His room's over there. Where? I, I would like to see it real quick. She's like, well, he's out about town, probably visiting the doll makers. So she walks over quickly and undoes his bedroom. And she stands outside. It's literally right next door to the kids. So child is acting creepy, and he lives across bed across hallway from Demon Arm. As you walk in, you see Isaac's room is full of pretty little dolls with powder white skin and auburn hair, and some of them dress beautifully, others plainly. Some of the dolls fill a long bookshelf, and others are arranged in neat rows on the wall-mounted shelves, and still others are piled atop on a bed and also on a heavy wooden chest. What's mostly odd is that all the dolls, apart from the clothing, look the same, and you recognize who the doll looks like. Who? Irina. Mm-hmm. I mean, honestly, though, Adri is a brunette, about the same height, about the same build. We we could pawn her off on the on the demon what? arm and get what? some information. What? No. <laughs> Why? Why would you even do that? Oh, I wish I had the video to see your face for that. <laughs> red. Ever... Out of red. No. <laughs> I am so happy with the way this party is progressing. I'm almost there. I'm so happy that Kavir isn't here to see the dolls and make that kind of connection. That's true. At least Ragnar won't actually do that. Yeah. So, like, Everyone Adrian? should be nice because I have a mirror assassin now. You don't know how to use it. Right. Oh, God, you better hope, hope I don't. You're like a dog that caught a tire. <laughs> yeah, and you're you have a flat so be nice to the dog. It's like Adri will start to walk like into the room, but as soon as she sees all the dolls, she just like stops dead. This is a lot. This is a lot. You see all the dolls have a tag on them that says is no fun, is no Blinsky. <sighs> You recognize as the tag is wah, wah, wah. You also see a number of empty wine bottles from the Wizard of Wines 
labeled purple grape mash number three. Excuse me while I kiss the sky. All right, I got an 18 perception on the room, David. All right. You see the chest and you notice it's not unlocked or it's not locked. Okay. I'm going to go over and open it. You find a number of clothes, a heap of oh, just, I mean, this guy doesn't even do his laundry. It just reeks when you open the chest, and you find a non-magical short sword. Does it reek to me, or does it reek to normal people? It, normal people. Okay. It just smells like just dirty clothes. Yeah. So you see a number of sketches also in the chest of what appear to be Irina. Hmm. Hello, Clarice. But as far as you guys know, <laughs> Irina has never been to Leaky before. Okay, so this dude is apparently possessed by Strahd? Question mark? Uh, uh, I'm shit. I really wish I was here because I, I have a really strong connection of yeah. information. Yeah, I know. It would have been great if you hadn't a burnt ass, but you did, so... Here we are. With the information I was given, and I thought that that mirror was important. Oh, no. The mirror is. There's more to the mirror. All right. So I'm going to close the lid. Um, and I'm going to... I have some ball bearings that I took from the shop. Yeah. I'm going to take six of them and place them under his mattress. That's fucked up, dude. <laughs> <laughs> so I place I place six of them under his mattress in in strategic points. I'll All roll, right, I'll roll a uh, medicine check to make sure that I'm placing them in the proper space. All right. Uh, that would be a nineteen. Yes, you do. I want to make sure that whatever he lays down on that bed. It is so uncomfortable, and he will never figure out why. <laughs> is this the, right de- the demon arm in the pee? Yeah, it is. <laughs> oh, good lord. All right. <laughs> so. Can, um, can Adri uh, cast Detect Magic? And look around the room. Sure. Okay. That's what she'll do. You see your mace light up. A um, couple of other items on yourself light up. Radix chest lights up. But besides that, nothing else really lights up in the room. Okay. I'm so, so glad there's not a video of Bubba right now with his chest lighting up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, oh no. There it is. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Woo. Oh, that's nibble. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not looking. Good call. <laughs> Bubba's getting naked. Oh, no. I'm not getting naked. I'm just, I, I undid four buttons. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody, that's five bucks a button. Cough it up. <laughs> uh, speaking of which, Chris D upgraded his Patreon account from a $1 account to a $5 account. Hell yeah, man. We, yeah, so we have you another so name much. at the drawing. Yeah. Yep. So he's in Thank the drawing. You. That's awesome. That's that's three now for the drawing, right? That is. Nice. Oh, no. so, man, what are happen? these guys think? As of right now, everybody has a (laughs) certain percentage chance to win. Nice. (laughs) That 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 is a one in three chance. Yeah, that's the drunkest you're ever going to catch me on audio. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, we can get you drunker. (laughs) Oh, that'd be a fun game. Oh, no, it wouldn't. (laughs) Yeah, like 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 a drunk stream. 
<laughs> oh, Lord. I can arrange that. I yeah, it'll be Drunkens and Dragons. I can't. I'm a lightweight. Yeah. Well, that's the whole point, Rachel. <laughs> Rachel, I'll you drink all, it all for you. Don't worry. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Chudakote is going to be plus 21 now. <laughs> <laughs> so. All right. Now the bubble is back. We have to get serious. I love it. His hat's crooked like he's from the fucking OC or something. Right? <laughs> oh, no. That... <laughs> That uh, honestly, I'm going to take my headphones off so I can't hear a shit y'all are saying. But the more I drink, the worse my hat gets. So, sober, Bubba. Couple of beers. Couple of more. <laughs> kind of fucked. <laughs> oh no, I'm the, I'm the same way. My hair, my hair goes crazy. I got Irish drunk hair. Yeah, like it starts off normal, and then at the end of the night, I look like I just had a really good idea in a lab. <laughs> <laughs> so the more crooked my hat is, the more I've had to drink. Nice. Already. Um. So. So. Uh, you guys Adrian's, are still in the doll room. Yes. Uh, Adrian's gonna go to to Serena. Um. Say, are you? Are you? Okay, working here. This seems. This seems like a weird place. It has been. Can, like, maybe we can help you find a new job somewhere else because this seems dangerous. Oh, is, the is, 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 like, is there a woman's shelter in Baliki? <laughs> 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 she looks over. She's like, there, "There's no. It's not that." There's no place in town I can go to work that after here. I work for the Baron and his wife. But she can hand. Uh, <laughs> sorry. She can work on the stocks exchange. <laughs> These. Do you have that was shitty even for you, bro. That was funny. Do you have like a contract or something that? No, no. it's just more. Adria, I do believe what a... she is saying is that if she quits here, nobody else will hire her. Did I get that? Yeah, if, anyone, if anyone hired me, the Baron would show them ill favor, and nobody wants to find the Baron's ill favor. Mm -hmm. Oh, that sounds like a challenge. <laughs> oh, no. You can work for us. <laughs> What are oh, your you're so lucky I'm out there right now. <laughs> no. How long does it take to get there? <laughs> With or without a mirror? <laughs> I don't need the damn mirror. Uh, so, okay. Uh, let's, let's see how things are in a couple days. And also, like, we're, I mean, we're probably not going to, like, stay here for a long time so maybe like when we leave like you also happen to be leaving and then we can like drop you off in like the next town or something what is your name Serena Serena no woman should ever be in position where she thinks that it is impossible to leave the moment that you start thinking so, that is the moment that you should probably go ahead and leave. And that's a 16 persuasion. She begins to nod and agree. She's like, well, then I will pack my things and you let me know when you leave town and I will leave with you. If you must go okay. now, we will take you now. This town is not as important to me as, as it is to others. What is important to me is that you are not in position that, that you do not have to be in. So, she used to us for a moment, and she's like, I'm fine as long as I'm serving the Baron or the Baroness. The Baroness keeps me close. If that starts to change, you come and find me. And I, w I will remove you from household by force if I must. But you will not serve. You will, that. you will not serve in place where you do not want to be. <laughs> she hugs you. Aww. I, hu I hug her back. What a tender hug. 
Dees, you can laugh all you want to, man. If you read my backstory, you'd understand this. Oh, I didn't do that. I'm sorry. So, right. She's like, well, are you really wanting to see the the young baronet? Duh. Okay. I'll show you the way to the attic. Once you get up there, you cross the whole attic. You can't miss this room. His workshop. Okay. She she takes you to the master bedroom and pulls down the trap door to the ceiling. All right. I guess we'll climb up. Is there a weight rating on the side of this this ladder? <laughs> Mm-mm. Okay. I'm, I'm going to let Adri... No, actually, I'm going to climb up first because I don't know what we're getting into. <laughs> and this way, if the ladder falls, then at least we're both down here. Okay. As you get up there, you see the dusty 20-foot square room as a high-pitched ceiling that reaches its peak 20 feet above. The wood rafters are shrouded in cobwebs except for an old table and a lantern on it. The room is empty. You see a door to the south wall that can be pulled open. All right. I've, I've reached down to help Adri up. Okay. All right. Then I open the door. Thanks. As you guys open the door, you see a large attic full of old forgotten things draped in white sheets. So, Adrian, you can stock up in sheets again. Piled around them are barrels and crates and trunks and old furnishings covered in cobwebs and dust. But you see a clear footpath through the maze. A single set of human footprints in the dust that lead beyond to a door on the other side. Okay, um, is it clear for a, a grown-up? Or is it clear it's clear for, for anyone to move around. Yeah. All right. So I can move there, There's it. enough of a path. To, yeah. All right. Stay behind me because I'm... Not... It's a curvy way through all the junk and the stuff, but you guys do make it through. From what I've heard, okay. this this is a place that... I'm just... I have, I have bad feeling. Okay. Well... Make sure you knock. As you guys reach the door, we're going to end with this. You see a large skull carved into the door, and hanging from the doorknob is a sign that reads, All is not well. And there we will end for the night. guys for listening to freelance heroism we hope you're having just as much fun listening as we are playing visit us at facebook.com slash freelance heroism and leave us a like want to see our adventures in comic form our own mr professional illustrates our misadventures and more at 1d4rounds.com our theme music is i'm what you'd be without her by dr turtle used under the creative commons license you can find a link in the show notes our cast includes Dees cassius as kavir the professional Rachel Moore as Adri the Wood Elf, Bubba Downs as Ragnick the Bold, Jake Sipple as Chunakote the Wayward Shaman, and of course, last but not least, our DM, David Walker. Questions or comments? Send an email to mail at freelanceheroism.com. And don't forget to give us a five-star review wherever you get your podcasts. Thanks again for listening, and we'll see you in two weeks. In the meantime, the invoice is in the mail. Looking to record your very own high-quality podcast? Check out Podcast Center LA. Mention this show and get $10 off your first recording.